Now we are going to talk about the aquatic ecosystems. Aquatic ecosystems, ecosystems present in water. We know that this ecosystems which are present in water, the water have to support the life and all the factors which are affecting upon the water will be affecting uh, the living forms, the life forms. Water have certain specific properties. Aquatic ecosystem, whether it consists of a marine, marine ecosystem that is the sea or it is a freshwater ecosystem like a pond or a lake or a, maybe a, a stream, water is the major component. These are the some important characteristics of water which are responsible for supporting life or uh, for the presence of a specific form of life inside that ecosystem. Water changes its temperature slowly. Water do not change its temperature like air quickly. Now this is a property which is helpful or more appropriate for life because sudden changes and quick changes in temperature are difficult for organisms to accommodate. So it means that water is a um, good or more supportive form of an ecosystem for the organisms and for the life. This is the reason that most of the waters, um, lakes, the oceans, seas, they uh, have a huge biodiversity in themselves. Water absorbs considerable amount of light energy. Water, even a very clear water or even a very unclear water, they absorb a considerable form of energy in the form of light, the sunlight. And that sunlight we know is the entry point of energy in an ecosystem. This is the reason that many plants and other organisms which can um, carry out photosynthesis can sustain their life in the water very well. But there is a problem with it that in the upper layers of water, light penetration is always good. But in the lower layers of water, usually light penetration is reduced. This is a problem for living organisms because um, in the lower uh, uh, parts of the uh, water body, ocean or a lake or a pond, light penetration is, um, is less, less than its, um, we can say, uh, its normal um, uh, level and maybe this is not uh, supportive for photosynthesis to occur. And if this is difficult to con carry out the photosynthesis, then the producers will not be able to make food and they will not be able to uh, make energy. Uh, this will result in um, uh, no energy in the eco coming in the ecosystem and the result will be a dead ecosystem ultimately. There is another thing that nutrients are usually concentrated at bottom. Because everything which is present in an ecosystem, in a water ecosystem, the organisms, their parts like fallen leaves uh, of the plants or um, the dead organisms, all of them will go and set it, settle into the bottom. So bottom is rich in nutrients. Water, um, the bottom have not much organic nutrients. Mostly the beds of uh, the water ecosystems have good diverse life forms. Water is abundantly available in this ecosystem. The benefit, water is a limiting factor. This is very, very important. And because ecosystem itself consists of water, so water is abundantly available. So aquatic eco ecosystems are usually uh, very, very supportive for life forms. But just there is a problem on the base, then uh, the light penetration is low. We take an example of a freshwater lake. Freshwater lakes, they vary in nutrients in the physical conditions and their depths. Freshwater lakes sometimes may be very, very, very deep, um, several meter deep, meters deep. Sometimes they are uh, quite shallow, but they have, and life which is present inside the lakes is according to um, the conditions present in a lake. If we consider a lake, it consists of three major zones. Zones of a lake are littoral zone, the limnatic zone, and the profundal zone. Littoral zone is the zone of shallow water. The water from the bank of that particular lake and uh, going down towards the depth, but which is still shallow. In the shallow water, this is the benefit that light penetrates till the bottom. The photosynthetic organisms can grow very well in this um, particular area. So uh, there is a rich diversity of organisms present inside uh, this zone. Phytoplanktons, 
which are um, small organisms, which are photosynthetic and they can, um, uh, they can produce food and they can convert sunlight energy into um, chemical energy and then the consumers, the zooplanktons, small animal forms which eat upon the phytoplankton, the, uh, the plant-like plant um, organisms and then the fishes which can eat upon both of these. Then the carnivore fishes which can eat upon those herbivore fishes. Um, then comes the next zone when the lake is deep. It consists of two major zones, limnatic zone and the profundal zone. Limnatic zone, the topmost layer in which the penetration of sunlight is sufficient to support photosynthesis. Again, the plant life exists and the phytoplanktons, the plant like organisms, um, they exist a lot. They are uh, very diverse, they carry out photosynthesis and they produce food and they also produce the energy for other life forms. Then there are other organisms like uh, crustaceans, small insects, the water insects uh, which feed upon the phytoplanktons or some plants. We have submerged plants like for example lotus. जो कवल के फूल होते हैं, कवल का जो पौधा जिसको हम कहते हैं, the lotus, um, their leaves are on the top and their branches are inside. So uh, different types of um, other plants like this, which are um, fully or partially submerged, they are present in this zone and they can carry out photosynthesis very well. And there are zooplankton which eat upon these, like insects, small crustaceans, and then there are fish. Um, the herbivore fish which eat upon these plants and there may be large size fish or maybe the carnivore fish which hunt upon these fishes um, which are herbivore. So there is a um, long food chain. There is a diverse form of, there are diverse forms of life present in the um, limnatic zone. Then comes the profundal zone. This is the zone at the depth. In this zone uh, from depth to the bottom say about middle of the lake to the bottom of the lake. In this zone, light penetration is not good enough to support photosynthesis. So this is difficult for, for the producers to live in this particular area. In this particular area, a specific type of organisms, particularly the bacteria can live, which are called chemotrophs. These bacteria can convert inorganic chemicals and utilize the energy present in the inorganic chemicals to make their food and their energy. We call them chemotrophs. They do not require sunlight as energy source, rather they use inorganic chemicals or sometimes organic chemicals as their energy source and um, convert, uh, convert these into chemical form of energy and their food. We call them chemotrophs. Then, the decomposers can survive very well in this, in this zone because we know that the bottom of the lake will have all of the dead parts of the organisms. They will have all the dead organisms settled in their, um, uh, on their base. So the decomposers can survive very well in this um, last zone, the profundal zone. So this is also rich in biodiversity. It have more of uh, decomposers, more of the um, animal-like organisms, we can say, and more of the um, chemotrophs. So uh, a lake is divided into these three zones, shallow zone, the deep zone, and deep zone is further divided into uh, the top layer, limnatic zone in which light penetration is good, and the profundal zone, the base zone in which light penetration is not sufficient to support the photosynthesis and in all of these zones the life which are the living organisms which are present are just according to the, these properties um, of these areas. Now the human interference, human always interfere with the ecosystems. Humans because water bodies are always um, see we can say uh, interfered or uh, enriched by human um, uh, we can say produced materials. The agricultural runoff waters, when we do our own things, we have to go to the water bodies, we have to go to the water bodies, we have to go to the pounds, 
یا پھر اس کو لیکس کی طرف بہا دیتے ہیں سو وین ہیومنس اینٹر دیئر ڈفرینٹ ٹائپس آف رن آس ایون دا انڈسٹریل ویسٹ واٹرس وی تھرو آل دی انڈسٹریل ویسٹ واٹرس ان ٹو دا ریورز اینڈ دا لیکس دیز ریزلٹس ان کالڈ سچویشن کالڈ یو ٹرافیکیشن دس ریزلٹس ان ویری ہیوج گروتھ آف سم سائنو بیکٹیریا سائنو بیکٹیریا آلسو کالڈ بلو گرین الجی وچ کیری آؤٹ فوٹو سنتھسس بیکاز ان دا ٹاپ لیئر دا لائٹ انرجی از اویلیبل ان ایکسیس سو دے گرو ویری ویل when they grow very quick they produce a scum uh, on the surface of the water body that is they grow so much that they cover the surface of the water body and this results in um, no oxygen almost no or or very very less quantity of oxygen penetrating inside and uh, the availability of food uh, to the other producers is also affected Um, availability of sunlight to the other producers is also affected because the surface is covered. Um, the result is that the, all the other plants, the animal life forms, the crustaceans, the fish, they start dying. And in some time, uh, the uh, life forms other than the cyanobacteria, they die. When they die, they go and settle into the bottom. When they go and settle into the bottom, then more and more decomposers, they grow inside. when they grow inside they break up all these dead organic bodies uh, dead uh, materials uh, the, the bodies of the organisms they even provide more food for these um, cyanobacteria and the other decomposers the result is destruction of the habitat which results in we can say destruction of the whole ecosystem only a few types of life forms are then present there and all the other lives the diversity of life is gone and this results in instability of the ecosystem and the whole ecosystem is destroyed there are a lot many lakes in the world and ponds usually which are destroyed like this now we are going to talk about the terrestrial ecosystem terrestrial ecosystems are the ecosystems present on land from as we know that uh, evolution theory says that life was existing initially in waters and then it was transferred to land the organisms adapted certain characteristics um, in transition from uh, water to land the animals they produce skeleton skeleton is um, the hard framework of the body that supports actually organisms um, on the land in the plants they have vascular bundles these vascular bundles also provides them sort of a skeleton which allow them to stand um, straight on the earth The second important thing is this, that water is essential for life and water is not very sufficient in a land or in a terrestrial ecosystem. So water is a limiting factor. All the organisms, plants and animals adapted to conserve water to the maximum. Now we talk about some major terrestrial ecosystems. Terrestrial ecosystems are divided into four major categories throughout the world, forest ecosystem, forest ecosystem is uh, itself further divided into uh, some different types the tropical rain forests the temperate deciduous forests and the coniferous alpine and boreal forests the second type is a grassland ecosystem jinhe hum charagahein kudrati charagahein kehte hain then comes the desert ecosystems and then comes the tundra tundra very very cold ecosystems so terrestrial ecosystems are divided into four categories the forests the grasslands the deserts and the tundra pakistan is rich in biodiversity and rich in ecosystems we are uh, present in, the, in that area where we have forests we have grasslands we have deserts and even we have tundra